I was going from one thing to the next. So, you know, I would buy a new car, and then when that didn't do it, I'd go out and buy clothes or take a trip. And then I went through hobbies. You know, I did triathlons, I did running, I took up wine as a hobby. I mean, on and on the list goes. Dr. Greg Veeman was convinced he had everything he needed to find happiness. The successful career, the lifestyle, but it never seemed to be enough. It was a combination of you're sad, you're empty, and yet at the same time you're kind of angry and frustrated because you're thinking, well, why? You know, what's wrong with me? You know, why aren't I fulfilled? Why don't I feel like I have achieved what I worked my whole life for? And so you're embarrassed. You're not going to tell anyone, so you keep it inside. And then what you end up doing is taking it out on other people. Which he I also had it. all the answers. His wife, Ruth, explains. He was, I mean, he was, a, he was good, but he had a short fuse. He was arrogant. He was always right. He's the type of person. He's his own person. He's the boss. You know, he always did well his whole life. He was always number one at everything. Greg was quick to take issue with others, including his Christian neighbors, who Greg thought were giving his family the cold shoulder. And I'm going to get a Bible and I'm gonna to prove to them that they're not practicing what they preach. Greg started reading the Bible and was shocked by what he learned. I realized that Jesus was claiming to be God in the flesh, the God man on earth. And I never heard that before. So that quickly got my attention because I realized if it did happen, it was the most important event in human history. And if it didn't happen, then it was just a religious fairy tale that someone made up. So I quickly forgot about the neighbors and decided, hey, I need to find out if this really happened. I really got interested when I heard Luke's prologue where he says, you know, that he checked everything out because he's a doctor and doctors would normally disprove miracles, not authenticate them. Greg spent weeks studying and researching. He realized Christianity hinged on one event, the resurrection. I started before looking for every possible explanation that would say it didn't happen. You know, did Jesus, maybe he didn't die. Well, that wasn't true. Even in the Journal of the American Medical Association, doctors had concluded that he definitely died. Uh, maybe the apostles stole the body. I mean, maybe they were seeing hallucinations, all these different theories. But the problem was none of them were credible. None of them made sense. The only explanation from the historical facts, the way it was set up with the Roman guards and everything, was that the tomb was empty and he actually rose. The real thing that got me was the Apostle Paul because here's a guy, he's Jewish, he's killing Christians, he has nothing to gain. What in the world could make this guy go and be the greatest evangelist ever? There was only one explanation and that was with, that he saw the risen Lord Jesus Christ. So when I looked at the resurrection, looked at the evidence of these guys and their changed lives, I said, I, I have to believe it. Now Greg had the answer, or at least he thought he did. Christianity is okay, you know, he really did it. And if you believe and he sees that you go to church and you're trying to do the right thing, then when you die, you'll go to heaven. I mean, what more could there be? Greg was about to find out. It started after he treated a walk-in patient at work. I went in, you know, told him if he had any questions to ask me. And he was just staring me like dead in the eye. And that's when he came out and just said, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior? And I about passed out. I wasn't expecting that. And I, all this other stuff was happening at the same time. I'm like, well, how does he know? Why is he asking me this? Who is this guy? And I kind of just bolted out of the room and says, I'll be right back. Cause I didn't know what to do. There were things in my life that I, you know, wanted to change, you know, the anger, the frustration, but I didn't have the power to change. And so it just kind of all culminated where I just kind of broke down crying and asking God to forgive me and basically just, you know, kind of repented of my sins and asked him to change me and that I, I wanted to, you know, live a new life. The very next morning, Greg noticed something was different. I was just like completely peaceful. I wasn't frustrated. I wasn't feeling angry. I felt content for no reason. So I quickly expected everything to dissipate and go back. But as I began to live that day, I realized, you know, hey, there's something really different. So if I was different and feeling completely different, I had to have been changed or something in my biochemistry of my body had to be changed. I said, well, maybe somehow my antihistamine got switched out for something like Valium. 
So I went and checked my medicines, and of course, you know, that wasn't it. Greg found out why he felt different in the Book of Romans, chapter 6. Basically, what it said in there was that when you become a believer and get saved, and the Holy Spirit comes into you, which is something I was completely unaware of, that the old person that you were somehow dies. And then it cross-referenced that to Galatians 5.22, which talks about how the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And I'm like, you know, hey, that's it. That's, that's how I feel. I've got that list. Later that night, Greg told Ruth what happened. It was a miracle to me because I didn't ever think that Greg could ever change. He was suddenly concerned about other people, which shocked me. Greg went looking for the patient who had talked to him. The problem was his name wasn't on the schedule anymore. I mean, it was handwritten in ink, and I knew exactly when it was, and it's not there. And I checked for like the whole month, and the guy basically wasn't there. His record was completely gone. There was no evidence that he ever came in the, in the office. Greg says while there's no doubt the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus are true, the real proof is in his changed life. I would say since the day I was saved, I've never felt alone. I've never felt empty. I've never felt all of that discontentment and stuff. I feel like I'm married to a different person. I feel like my old husband is not around anymore, and I've got this new husband who's awesome. When Dr. Greg Veeman brings up the Apostle Paul's conversion after years of considering evidences for Christianity, the conversions of the early skeptics like Apostle Paul always hits me the most. I mean, how do we explain someone going from supporting Christians being killed and actively persecuting them to then being persecuted as a Christian? How do we explain Jesus's brothers, James and Jude? In the Gospels, Jesus' brothers thinks that he is nuts with his messianic claims. They encourage him to go somewhere where they believe he will be murdered. Yet his brother James goes on to be murdered for his faith in Jesus. And the martyrdom of James is recorded in the antiquities of Josephus, the most trusted first century Jewish historian. Or how do we explain the change in the apostles? Why does Peter deny Jesus in the New Testament Gospels, but then go on to be martyred for Christ? The martyrdom of Peter is historically verified in Clement's letter to the Corinthians in the first century. Clement was a first century bishop in Rome. So the best explanation for all these radical changes is the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. His resurrection provides undeniable evidence for his claims. So even his own family who thought he was off his rocker went on to proclaim him as Lord. As James wrote in James 1, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, or in James 2, my brother, and also show no partiality as you hold the faith in Jesus Christ, the Lord of God. Glory wanted to redo this testimony. This is one of 33 testimonies of atheists who found evidence for Christ, became Christians. Christ is king. Every knee will bow. Absolutely.